This is the video walkthrough for lecture two for the St. Louis University course Intro to GIS. And what I want to do today is walk through several of the tutorials from chapter one of GIS tutorial for ArcGIS Pro. As you can see on my screen here, I've got all of the data downloaded. Uh, if you don't have the data, you can go to page five of the textbook. It gives you a URL uh, under step one to download the data for these various tutorials throughout the book. Once you have it downloaded, navigate to it in Windows Explorer. Depending on your version of Windows, it may look a little different. I'm running Windows 7 here. So I've got Windows File Explorer open to the Chapter 1 folder, and you can see I've got Esri projects for each of the various tutorials. So what we're going to do is go ahead and double click on tutorial 1-1. This is the fastest way to open data you've already started working with. We'll let ArcGIS Pro open. All right, and here we have the main ArcGIS window. It's broken down into three pieces. We've got a number of ribbons up here at the top. We've got a contents pane here. And then we have our main map window here. We'll start. Uh, at the bottom of page five, we'll go ahead and close the contents window. And then in the view, what they call a tab, uh, Microsoft calls these ribbons and other contacts. So we'll use ribbon and tab interchangeably. We'll go ahead and click on contents to restore that window. And so this works for any of the main uh, items we might want to view, whether it's the catalog and some of uh, the contents and some of the other aspects of the ArcGIS Pro user interface. Second thing we want to do in this tutorial is just review, uh, go through how to save different items. Click on Project, go to Save As, and in that space, uh, under Name, I'm going to give this its own file name. All right, next we want to talk about base maps. So Esri software now comes with the ability to use a web-based base map behind any data that you have brought into the software. Uh, these are available under the map ribbon. You can click on the base map button. And you can see we've got a bunch of different choices here. So the book suggests adding the streets layer uh, I like a number of these, the terrain with labels, both the dark and light gray canvas, uh, all look very nice and are great complements to uh, maps you may be making with the software. We'll add the streets layer. If we want to explore the base map just a little, we can use this fix zoom in button on the toolbar click on it several times, and this allows us the ability to zoom in. We can click and hold on the map in an area that's not a feature, one of these white or gray or black polygons, to move the map around. Notice that my ArcGIS Pro drags just a little bit. Um, this is very large software, and unless your computer is exceptionally fast, you may notice some performance issues. So it just requires a little bit of patience with the software. If we wanted to change the base map, as the book suggests, we'll use the light gray canvas instead. This is much more minimal, and actually from a cartography perspective, uh, it blends in significantly with the uh, color ramp that's selected for our vector data. And so it may not be the most optimal choice to use uh, with this particular color ramp. Next we want to look at how to change layers that are visible and not visible. You can see in the contents here we've got quite a few layers that are visible and not visible. So first we can shut this population density layer off by unchecking the box in the contents. We can recheck it to turn it back on. And then following the book we will turn on some of the healthcare related layers such as the clinics layer. the MedExpress clinics layer. We'll 
with the different layers turned on, we'll move the map back to what JS Offer calls the full extent, so the largest possible view of the map we can take. Uh, you'll notice that layers are drawn in a specific order, so they will follow the, the ordering of the table of contents. That means the poverty index, because it's below population density, will be obscured wherever population density data covers the poverty index image, this green box here. So the ordering is really important, and we can change that ordering by dragging items in the contents. And so now, when the map redraws, we'll see that we can't see much of the population density data at all because the poverty index data covers it. And there we go. Again, you'll notice the performance issues need to give the software just a little bit of time to catch up with what you want to do. At this point, it's probably a good idea to save. Uh, my attitude with this software is to save early and often. We can turn on a couple of other layers as well. I'm going to shut off the poverty index raster just for a minute. Add streets, rivers, and the Allegheny County boundary. It looks, looks roughly, um, with the exception of the base map, like the book at the middle of page 9. Now you notice we can't see streets at all. Uh, it is possible to set layers so that they are only visible at a certain perspective or a certain um, level of zoom in or out of the map. And, and we're going to cover that just a little bit later in the chapter. Next, we want to talk about the catalog pane. So we're going to go to View, click on the catalog pane. This will give us access to everything that is within our project. So if we pull down maps, we can see that there are two maps that have been made that are associated with this project. We can see folders stored within this project. And any data, specifically geodatabases, that are associated with this project. Uh, this, is, this is really important. Um, there are two ways to store data. We, we've talked about shapefiles just a little bit during the first class. The other major way we store data is an, an Esri geodatabase, something we'll cover later in the semester. And so we'll always look for either shapefile data or a feature that is stored inside a geodatabase. We can also store map layouts in projects. We can also store map layouts in a project. You can see one layout has already been created. And this is designed for a map to be either printed or uh, shared as a image. If we wanted to save an image of this map, we can go to the Share ribbon and click Layout. Here it's defaulted to the lab for today. I'm going to go back to my hard drive here. Follow the suggestion to save this as a JPEG file. Set the resolution to 300 dots per inch and click Export. And now, under Chapter 1, we have that map image that we could share with a colleague or a client. And that gets us to the end of the first tutorial.